I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Explosion 4. Got fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Please, now remember given the payday. Has you been accounted for? Okay. 610B, now is the main date. 610B. I'm out uh, here. We got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling. Fire shown from the second floor. Give me a second alarm on this. See up there, the top floor. I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke. Go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. Got people on the front fire escape here with windows sensors below them. We need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one story single family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor, second line being stretched. Primary stretches are underway. Hey, welcome back to Old School. I'm Rick Lasky, along with my buddy John Salka, and we're back with you for another episode uh, of the the podcast we're having fun with. We said it before, no scripts, no notes, just uh, John and I talking shop. Um, uh, a little reminder, because it's been a while now, we appreciate all, the, all the, the downloads, but this all started with, you know, all the years we've been traveling together and, you know, we sit in our, each other's hotel rooms, chat and get caught up or in the hotel lobby or at lunchtime when the students are gone. And we start, we just start talking shop, talking tactics, strategy, leadership, mayday stuff. Everything. And, and we finally said, you know, we looked at each other and said, we, we need to record these. We need to record these like 25 minute, half hour or so conversations and just put them out there. So we that's what we're doing. Nonsense. Nobody will believe it. We said it. Yeah. <laughs> and that we're having fun, you know, we're, we're having fun with these. So, but, uh, so, Hey, John, um, you and I talked about doing this one a while back and, uh, it was one of those that, you know, like I said, we come up with ideas and it popped back into my head and, and I know it did yours. Um, but that let's, let's talk basement fires. I know, uh, it's a topic to talk about, not, not a great, not a great operation to jump into. Nobody really says, boy, I can't wait for a nice basement fire, you know, <laughs> but uh, certainly they're certainly challenging and, and dangerous and uh, a little more technically, you know, technically difficult maybe than, you know, I don't want to say your typical or your average, you know, room and contents fire, but I think there are definitely some more things to think about. Well, and, and our, our friends at UL just put out a training program. They, they actually, they did a really good job with their research with basement and, uh, you know, lower accessible, lower levels, if you'll walk out basements. And I guess that's the first thing, John, to talk about is, I know you're, you're, you're huge, so am I, on pre-plans and knowing your still districts and your town or your city. And, you know, you get south, southern part of the country, you don't find many basements, if at all. Um, I know in the north part of Texas, we didn't have that many. I know Louisville, I think we had one in town. And then, John, all these people come with these subdivisions, started building these homes and building the berms. And, you know, and, and you know, you look at the house from the front, you're all oh, two story house or one story ranch or whatever big one. And then you walk around the back and the whole back side's exposed to the lower level. So, you know, we're not talking necessarily a cellar. We can talk about that or something. You're going to go in from the outside, you know, to get into a cellar usually or whatever, you know, most of them, or an actual basement on all four sides where you go down and there might be an emergency exit or an emergency window. Like my, my cousin's up in uh, Grand Chute, Wisconsin, nice new house, full basement, full big ass basement. And they have their window per code, the oversized window. It has the pull, the chain you have to, you know, to be able to the escape window. Yeah, I got them in my house. I got a full basement with, with bedrooms with escape windows and a big window well you can step out onto and step up and walk right out. Walk right out or the ones that have even the little ladder with them too, you know. Yeah. So you've got those, but then you've got, you know, like I said, you know, I saw them in, in Trophy Club and we, we saw our team on the east side of Louisville and some of those others where all of a sudden now you're seeing where they didn't have necessarily a basement on all, four, you know, concrete on four sides where you had the walkout. And some of those, John, are the sneaky ones that for a lot of people are, are I think are dangerous because you could have a good, any basement fire is dangerous, but a good rip and fire and not pay attention to it and, and have this access. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, let, let's, let's talk about that, John, you know, um, first off, you know, you and I, when we, when we do our classes, especially our tactics, our scenarios classes is one of the things I know I always talk about is, you know, all the years, you know, fighting basement fires, as soon as you get in and realize, let's talk about what the signs are in a minute, but as soon as you realize it's below you, you, you have to tell command, you have to tell the IC, and the IC is going to ask you two things, right? 
do you want to go get it or do you want to back out? There's got to be a decision made. You're either staying in and going to try and find the, you know, the, the, the stairs to the basement and try to go after it, or you're going to back out and do something else or make another, make another plan. Right. Right. <laughs> what are you looking for, John, signs-wise? I mean, they teach it. It's in the ifs, the books, and all other things. But, you know, there, there's some signs you can tell if you've got a basement fire before even getting into the building, you know, some right. things you can look for. Well, well, obviously, one of the things is you can get a report of the basement fire. People could say there's a fire in the basement or the cellar or a fire downstairs, right? So, so you got a hint already that you might be going right for it and looking for it. The other thing is, although sometimes it's hard, sometimes if the only thing that's visible is the first floor, you, you, you got to run down the alley or down the driveway or down the side of the house and, and, and see if you can find a window well, see if you can find a little basement window. You know, we're talking here not, not about a berm or a walkout. We're talking about a regular right. basement fire under a house, right? So I've always said, even if it looks to you, even if you're convinced, even if you see fire on the first floor, that could still be a basement fire that's extended to the first floor. Somebody somewhere along the way should be taking one or two of those little basement windows, knocking them out with a hook, and you knock a basement window out with a hook, and you get a good, a good smoke addition pushing out of there. There's a fire down there. That's not pushing. That's not pushing out a basement window from a first floor fire. So certainly, that's one of the, as as a firefighter or a company officer, that's one of the things you want to make sure it gets done. And as a chief officer, that's one of the things you want to. I could say the same words again, make sure you get done, but you might actually have to assign somebody to that. Hey, truck one, let, let, let's pop a couple of them basement windows, make sure we don't have anything below us. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and I mean, walk in, and this is, again, we'll talk, we're going to do another show on the OV, the outside vent man, outside vent position, and the 360, the importance of doing that size up and giving, you know, the instant commander a better view. I'll tell you some of the basic, first of all, <clears throat> besides a wind-driven high-rise fire, which I know you've had a ton of, you know, in the Bronx, all over New York City, I think one of the most challenging fires besides that is the basement fire. The self, just getting, having to beat your way down into a basement if that's a decision you're going to make. And, and knowing sometimes you may only have one way out. You know, the right. older homes, right? right? The older homes don't have the escape window. They've got some base, like you said, some little basement windows all the way around. And they have a set of stairs that go down, you know, down there. And they may have a cellar door if you're lucky. You know, it depends on the age of the home leading out or an exterior door somewhere coming up some stairs some of the older ones did but once in a while there's a tricky one out there where they you know an older house where that that was it that cell you went downstairs and that's it your only way is to get back up that hole so it is i think it is one of the most challenging fires to fight go ahead buddy. and and there's a couple other issues there's a, a couple other um common situations in, in cellar fires or basement fires and technically there's a difference there but let's just talk about something below the main floor something below the first floor you know a basement in a house uh there's a couple of other features of that that make them a little bit more difficult one of them is not all and maybe now in modern times more people have finished basements or are finishing them partially but you know in the old days when i was growing up my dad's house was an unfinished basement by the time i left and got on the job it was finished i had the work side where there was a workbench and a laundry room and all the other stuff and the other side was my bedroom but you know where i live now i have a fully complete finished basement where I grew up for the most of my childhood, it was a fully unfinished basement, which means what? It's one large open area. And, and, and you what's got exposed? In one corner, and, and you got the, the laundry in the other corner, and you got the workbench in the third corner. You might even, you know, hump down and, and put, you know, a lawnmower or some stuff down there for the winter time, or, or store some old material down there. So if you get a fire in the far distant corner of a basement, it's going to meet you at the top of the stairs. Now, if that was a finished basement and it was a bedroom on fire down the corner, it's going to be the same as everywhere else. You're going to get some smoke coming up, but you might have little trouble getting to the door of that bedroom to go put that fire up. But with an unfinished basement, you, you have gigantic areas for smoke and heat and flame to travel unimpeded. Another thing that an unfinished basement presents danger is the unfinished ceiling. Now, any fire in a basement is directly and immediately attacking the unfinished structural elements of the first floor, which is your floor joists and your actual flooring for the, for the first floor, which is why another reason basement fires are so dangerous. We get people on the first floor making a rescue, making a search. They can actually end up in firefighters and victims have fallen through burned out flooring on the first floor of a, of a private dwelling into a, into a burning basement. Or they've been, hung, they've been hung up, right? You know, oh, where, sure. where, the, where the decking gives away before the joists, they go in and they're hung up while the fire is blowing up around and burning them, you know, hung up on, on, on the joy. So 
And I'm, uh, I'm I remember the guy in New Jersey. I remember that firefighter in New Jersey that died along with the victim. He had a, a female, a, a woman that was unconscious, dragging her out of a house. And actually, the, the joists and everything must have collapsed to some degree. They both fell through and died. Yeah, that was a dramatic, again, because of an unfinished basement. Unfinished basement. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up about the unfinished basement because, you know, I'm sitting there thinking the last one I was in with my relatives, brand new house, unfinished basement. They, they, they actually put the bathroom in for starters, but they didn't do the walls or nothing. So toilets and stuff in the sink. And there's a shop down there and all that. But everything was wide open above you. I mean, you could see the ductwork going up into, and you know. So you think about that, and then, like you said, people are storing everything from paints to other things down there, or so on and so forth. But it's it, it's lumber. It's unexposed, untreated, unprotected lumber. Unexposed. That's down there. Unexposed. Yeah. Oh, unexposed. Yeah. So so many chances for fr fire to run up pipe chase and walls and everything else, so on and so forth. Now I I'll say this, and, and and I've seen this, you know, in the in, in the years past, where some indications also. You talked about exterior indications and so so forth. I love the idea, taking a hook and taking a window. I think the OV that was going around, popping a window. Command from OV, good. Hey, Chief, I don't know if you saw this when you, you got to the 360, but I just took a back basement. I got, I got smoke pushing out the basement, okay? Big, 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 big bit of information for the incident commander. So the other things, you know, you could force that door. Like we always talk about, you know, we always say never say never say always, but make an entry into that residence we almost always want to go through the front door. We've talked about that on shows before as to why and the valid reasons. You pop that door, there's things like I've seen guys, you know, I had some guys, Chicago buddies, Eddie Enright, take your hook, you know, at pick or whatever, and just pop the threshold off the front and see if anything comes up. You know, you're right at the door. Or some of these houses have a heat register right inside, like the, the four, right in front of you. And I remember one looking and seeing smoke pushing up out of the vent. I'm going, Oh, we got one. We got one in the basement. So, so different indicators besides the the usual stuff. Once you get in, that you know, floors warm underneath you or spongy, whatever those kinds of things. But with bunker pants now, that's getting harder and harder, John. The more insulated they are, you know, right? So, okay, you know, so we've got and there's more. We, we talked about some of the indicators: smoke pushing off from windows, doors below, whatever, taking a window. Some of the other things. All right, so now we've determined, or we had somebody say, hey, there's a fire. I know there's a fire in the basement. The smoke was coming up the stairs or whatever, okay? We know. Now, you and I have talked about this several times before, um, and I know I think our next show, like we said, we're going to do like the 360 no V. I, I like on a single-family dwelling the officer taking a quick peek, not necessarily having to lap the whole bit. If you, you've always said if you pull up right, if, you, if everything lays off for you right, you should catch three sides of the building as you pull up with your engine. You know, you should be able to pull up and see this side, the front, the side. You pop off that, that great video out of Dallas you and I talked about. We talked about the other day with uh, Bobby and Scott on um, our Hump Day Hangout, right? That great video out of Dallas, a great fire department. Seeing that firefighter reach up, pull the cross leg, he turns around his captain says, I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. And you see him take off, you know, hoofing it, going around, doing 360, this one-story frame. This kid stretches the hose, does all he's got to do, and there he is, before your eyes, real quick, if you catch two, you know, two sides or three sides when you pull up, you can get off. You take a little look towards the back. You come right back, and there you go. I think when we don't do that, it's like fighting a one-dimensional. If you, it's like looking at the pictures we do in class, where you go, I can't really see what I have out the back. Everything from smoke and fire indications, or you know, to what I have, and so on and so forth. Now, I know you and I are big believers in. We pull up. We got a residential fire. We want it. We want to shoot for the front door. And, and real quick, John, before we get to the basement, why do you, and t tell tell our, our our listeners why do you like picking the front door at a house? I, I love it; it's a great idea. But we've talked about before. Why the front door at a house? I mean, I mean, we've talked about this before, and I've written about it before. It's really a geography question. It's really all about you know where can you get to from there, and and the answer is everywhere. Once you go in the front door of a house. You're probably in a, in, a, in a public, not a public hall, but, you know, a center hall, or you, you, you dump right into the living room, which is going to connect to the dining room, and maybe to the hallway, which goes to the bedrooms. Um, it, it's, just a, it's just a great place to start. Secondly, if the, if the two-story building, your stairway is going to be at or near or in direct sight of the front door, probably. If you need to get to the second floor, that's probably the most direct way to get to the second floor. Additionally, once you, 
once you pass the front door, even if it's a first floor fire, and then you veer off to the right to, to make your way to the kitchen, now you got the line between the fire and the stairway, and firefighters can come in behind you and go upstairs, even if the fire isn't upstairs, and there's, you know, life hazard or searches to be conducted. There's just so many things you can do. Once you've, once you've identified or found or located the stairs to the second floor, whether they be right in front of you when you come in the front door, or whether they're, you know, a little halfway walk around, you probably found the basement stairs too, because they're generally going to be underneath the, the stairs going to the second floor, generally have the stairs going down to the basement right underneath them as well. So you, you can get a really good handle on the geography of the building, the layout of the building by using that front door rather than coming in the back door and not knowing where you are really. You know where you are when you're in the front door, but you come in the back door or a side door and you could generally end up going in any direction. And, 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 and again, I, you, uh, you know how much I believe in that as well. The front door is almost like we said, always the time or the place that, that you want to make entry. So let's talk about this real quick before we get in. You and I have talked about this. And, you know, a long time ago, I used to think, you know what, no matter what you go in, you, 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 you know, you figure out, okay, I've got the kitchen to the right. Or if the, if the basement is not underneath the stairs here, you know, there's some of those ranch homes where you get in there and the, the basement stairs are going to be off the kitchen. They're going to be off the kitchen, maybe on the you know, side somewhere where you get to make a right, crawl through the dining room or into the kitchen find it somewhere next to the pantry and down you go and all that. And, 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 and I used to go, you know what, that's what you do every time. And then we, we had a tragedy with, with an, a walkout basement firefighter got killed. Um, you know, they, you know, a bad thing where some folks misread the building, misread, they missed the walkout basement, so on and so forth. But, you know, it, it kind of, it, it discussion wise with some of my mentors and, and again, you know, some great mentors, my like chief Eddie Enright from Chicago was like, oh, so, so Rick, let's talk about that. You pull up, you got a one, let's just say it, call it a one story ranch, you know, or whatever, two, two, one or two story single family dwelling. You know, you get your firefighter stretch initial tack onto that front door. Cause we like that front door. You get off and you're going to run down the side, take a quick peek around the back or even do a 360 and you get back and you have a lower level exposed basement. Oh, hold, hold on one second. I'd rather talk real quick about you, you go around and it's a full basement. There's no walkout basement. Oh, okay. All right, let's do that first. And then we'll... One story ranch, you do a quick lap around it and it's just a one story ranch. There's nothing more different, nothing different in the back than the front. You a little bit of the basement shown with some little basement windows and the rest and the, and the first floor above it with a peak roof. So you run around that whole house. We know we don't have a walkout basement. We don't have a, we don't have the, 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 the side entrance doors or anything like that. The Bilco doors. We get back to the front. Every indication is we're going to put this fire in, out from the first floor. We're going to go in the front door. We're going to find the, the doorway to the basement stairs, and we're going to go down and put that fire out. That's probably the way we're going to do it. The reason we're going to do it that way is, I mean, we could have, just like a fire on any other floor, you could have any, any degree, any level of fire. You just might have a smoldering fire down there. It could be a couch on fire. It could be a room in contents. It could be an oil burner. It could be a lot of stuff burning down there, or it could be just a few things. So, we're not going to start filling up the basement from the windows to put the fire out because basement fires are scary. We're probably going to have to open that door at the top of the stairs, get down there with a line, find the fire, and, and put the fire out. Difficult condition going down from the top of the stairs, right? It's like, it's like starting a firefight at the ceiling, which is going to be the hottest, smokiest place. But that's obviously what we're going to be. And, and there's some tactics that we want to do, right? We want to get down that stairway fast. The engine company wants to get down quickly if they can. Uh, we've talked about that, that, that sort of that side saddle bouncing off the, yeah, bouncing off the top, going down on, on one cheek of your butt, you know, when one leg outstretched and being ready to stop anytime you have to. And there's some guys out there, John, that have said, which, you know, makes my teeth. I've heard them say, well, they tell you like to bat, you, you go down on your hand, you go down on your hands and knees backwards. So if you have to get out, you crawl. I'm like, first of all, how do you do this pushing a line down there? Secondly, I can't even see what's behind me. I like, like you said, the idea of going down. You got you're going down on your side, and and I want to say this for our, for our viewers, and I know you agree with this. You know, let's say there's a you know you open that basement door, and you you get a good push. You go, okay, it's down there. You give it a second, right? You get you, we've studied this before. You give it a second to read just how much velocity you got to come out of the basement, whether you're going to go or not. Now, like you say, I, I remember turning to one of my brand new firefighters and saying, okay, I'm going down. You push line now for when I get down our car, you get down there as quick as you come down on your side and all this. I am not going to open up the nozzle till I get down into the basement. So like you said, you get down on your side and you're pushing, pushing, pushing. And, and before we get down to the basement, John, how many times have you seen this where guys get jammed up, they get on the basement stairs 
maybe you look not so experienced or they panic, the fire comes up, right? The fire comes up, pushes up that, that the ceiling, if you will, of the basement, it comes up the stairs, and what's the first thing they do? They open up their line, and besides fire, now what comes up and gets them the steam, and then they panic. Yeah. They panic and they drop the line. We get guys burned up. Visibility. Yep. Not a good thing to do. As you just said, you want to hold tight. You want to grab that nozzle. You want to get down the stairs as fast as you can. Almost going almost as fast like you're falling down the stairs. And, and right. You know what? And it sounds a little odd right now talking, but when you find yourself on the stairs going down to a basement fire, you will remember this and you will be going as fast as you can. And when you hit the bottom, even if you pass some orange on the way down, I'm telling you right now, unless it continues, now, now you may have to knock it down. When you hit the floor, when you hit the last step, you may have to just open up the line and hit, hit it above your, your head real quick just to slow down the, so, so the next guy can come down the stairs. Without, right, right. Without fire short blowing burst. Up behind him. But if he comes down right behind you, I'm telling you, you should both be at the bottom of the stairs, you know, being very thankful that you're down there. Regroup, get behind each other, and now you're in business. Now you're ready to put the fire out. And don't, don't lose the nozzle. I know that's happened to a lot of guys. They're going down. Again, you're going down the stairs. Now, I guess let's back up for a second. How key is it to have a good heel man or gal up at the top? Put, you don't want to get hung up on the freaking stairs. So as, you're, as you've grabbed that line, chances are you're going to slow down trying to pull it all the way down there by yourself, through the first or whatever. Having a good guy or gal you know, up there pushing that line now for you as you're going – you don't want to lose that nozzle or control of it. Like you said, you get down to your, I've actually done it, John, you get down, you roll off, you, you get down the stairs and you roll onto your side and you're looking up and you can actually sometimes, right, you see the fire right before you kind of rolling and going right up the staircase and you give it a couple of short bursts and then you holler and then Tommy or Cindy comes down the stairs, boom, 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 boom really quick. They get next right, to you. Right. Again, you stay low, you watch it like you're in a training tower. And I, in fact, let me, <laughs> I'll never forget this, crawling into a building, and it was a justice. We got there during the day, and I think I may have told you this. Ron Zarzinski was the chief, great boss I've talked about. We lost Ron a little while back, pancreatic cancer. But I had a brand-new firefighter, Chris DiPiola. When I, he's been on for a long time now. Good firefighter. And we pull up, and we get in this town home, and we get into there, and I open up the basement door, pushes out, and it's one of these outward opening doors. It was a pain in the ass to get to. Popped it off real quick. I go, okay, we're going to go in there. Talked about – Everything you just said, John, I'm going to push down as quick as I can. You push the line for me. I'll holler for you to come down. He looked at me, go, we're going down there? I said, yeah, we're going down there. I get down. I roll on my side. I'm watching the fire. He comes down boop, 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 with me. And, and you know how you and I have been teaching for so long and doing live burns? For, and this is a bad thing. I turn into the live burn instructor. I'm laying there going, okay, do you see how it's rolling now? It's See it coming out of that back room there, whether it's a workroom or a bedroom, and see how it's rolling up the stairs down. This is what you – and I'm going through. I went, oh, shit, I have to put some water on the fire here, you know, and and, and I did. I didn't – you know, anyway, that being said, you know, everything you just talked about, I, I liked how you said it's almost like you're falling down the stairs, you're going down the stairs so much, on your hip – on your side, like you're riding a side down, saddle. Down. Now, you're, down your butt should hurt when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> and then rolling on your side with that nozzle in your hand and then hollering for your partner. Now, now here's another thing, John, too, is I think before we do that, we got to, I've always told guys, you got to do what you can to make sure you have enough line upstairs. Because let's say you get down, you're on the nozzle, you're laying there, your partner comes down and you look and you got fire coming around, pictured like your base. We got fire coming from that back bedroom. It's just like getting into a, an apartment building or high-rise fire, and you, you get in, and you got fire coming from bed, and you don't have enough line to make it. You're like, son of a – I'm just – You know what? Whether you're going down the steps in a private dwelling or down the steps in a tenement, the tenement might have a slightly longer stairway maybe by a couple of steps. But I've always said you want to make a nice big loop all the way up to the ceiling and then all the way back down. There should be a big, gigantic loop at the top of that stairs you know, make the engine officer should make sure that happens. Even if you just got a short crew, even if it's just you and a nozzle firefighter going down and, and your third guy's outside on a pump panel, make that big loop there. And then when you're ready to go down, you'll have enough hose to make it to the bottom without getting, without getting the hose getting jerked out of your hand or, or you getting stopped four steps from the bottom. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's easy to do, but you got to make sure you do it. Like you said, four steps from the bottom or, Next step, you've got you're on the bottom. Now you're going to push a little bit to get the other side of the base or out for the stairs, and you can't go nowhere because you don't have enough line. So that being said, staying low, getting down there, 
Now you want to write, use, if you have no other openings yet, you're the first tack line, you're waiting for the cavalry or whatever, they're just set, they're just stretching the second line or do what they're doing now. You almost, you really have to make sure you've got a good, if there aren't any windows open yet or you're limited, make sure you've got a good push, get, you know, get, you, that it's doing something instead of coming down on you, you know, and I'm not saying the fire necessarily, I'm talking about letting things roll, all the crap, the soil else, get it up out of there while you're finishing this thing off. How important is it, John, as a chief, okay, as a BC in the Bronx or chief where you're at now, you got your guys, the first crew, down they go. They're on, they're on the attack line. They're down in the basement. Where do you put the second line? Where does Chief Salka, the incident commander, put the second line now in operation or in position? Right. Well, I mean, if, if we got a house fire and we get a confirmed basement and we get the first line going down the basement, my second line is going to follow it right in. It's going to follow it right to the probably, – probably follow it right to the top of the basement stairs. And then to some degree, we're probably going to have to not slow down there but pause there. Number one, we can make sure that no fire comes up them stairs, which shouldn't be too much of a problem because we get the line down there now, and the line should be at least getting in position between the fire and the stairway. And we're also now in position to either contact them verbally or by radio, find out where the fire is. They might go down the stairs and say, it's in the far left corner, it's in the BC corner, in which case now that line that's at the top of the stairs might be able to redeploy if they have to, for extension, it might be extension. Well, and John, talk about that real quick because you said it. Let's say you get down and you're the your firefighter, Salka. You make it, you make a left, you get down, and this has happened right where these basements, like you said, are chopped up, or you've got storage underneath the one section that kind of high up and it's rolling out of there. You get back there, and maybe they have you know a ceiling with a void space, it can get up above you if you're not pulling it or whatever. And that's why the second line you talked about, I'm glad you said it because. It's so important because if they're getting it, fire should not be coming up. The, if fire's coming up the stairs, they're in trouble. They're not getting it. Or you got fire in a void space that's running up there. Right. right. And if they are getting it, that's wonderful too. But there's still going to be extension from before you even got there. There can be extension coming up through the floorboards, up into a closet, or up into the unfinished floor or the finished floor in, in the bedroom above the basement fire. So, or whatever room it is. So you want to definitely – the incident command is going to have to have a, a, a tight control over the second line. And I don't want the second line to go down the basement and back the first yeah. line up. I want the first line to handle the basement unless the, something urgent happens down there. I want the second line to be able to either prevent fire from coming up the stairs. It could go down there if they run into trouble or have trouble, a May Day or, a, or, you know, an urgent situation. Or a third option would be for them to find the extension point you know, a truck would find an extension point on the first floor. Hey, we got fire in the rear bedroom here above the, above the basement. They may have to, re you know, to deploy back to that corner. So all your years of experience, I know where I've been when it comes, and I've said this is, your, this is the best chance for some of our carbon monoxide activations, these alarms, when you push the residents out in the street, when you're walking around with your meter, you go down into the basement, you go, oh, John, come here, look at these freaking stairs. Can you imagine trying to push a line down here? For some of our younger firefighters, that, and there's some in the class I'm doing right now, that may not have that much experience fighting basement fires, describe off the top of your head how many different, pretty much, how many different setups you've seen. You already said unfinished. You know, talk about, just picture. I know in my head I've got a bunch going through of different basement configurations that people have done all kinds of chopping up, usually not a professional, by the way, and have right. wired their own. I mean, so you could have, not only could you have a hoarder situation, but you could have bedrooms, you could have a bath, right? I mean, workshops. I right. mean, you, you could have stuff partially stored. finished stuff where people have an unfinished basement. <coughs> they throw a carpet, they roll a carpet out on the concrete floor. They bank some two by fours up along one of the walls, maybe put some sheetrock. Sometimes people just hang, they just hang blankets and sheets and stuff. So all of a sudden they got a carpet on the floor, a couple of kids' toys laying around, some sheets up on the walls. Maybe they don't even pay attention to the ceiling. They got a couple of couple of fluorescent bulbs or regular old incandescent bulbs up there. And other people pile furniture. They pile furniture up as a barrier between where the kids are playing and the laundry room. Then you get over near the oil burner. Sometimes people got stuff piled way too close to the oil burner or to the or to the washer and dryer. All those things are hazardous, right? You get heat generating equipment, whether it be a, a hot water heater, an oil burner, a gas burner, a gas dryer, all, all of those machines produce heat. 
you put a mattress or a, or a couple of cardboard boxes too close to any one of those things, now you, now you have trouble again. And how about this? Another consideration that I want to make sure we talk about that we don't that we don't miss. Not all of your basement stairs are first of all are wide like the stairs go to a second floor. I know there's some smaller, but but they're they're not. These are not some of them. John, I've been you've been down there. I grew up in one where here's the basement stairs and hold them up. Actually, which hold most of the weight of the ride, you know, how they're cut. And there's like a couple two by fours holding, you know, this is all you have. And if, and if they've done anything to them, if they've manipulated them at all to, to hang stuff or, or the fire has attacked those, you can be heading down them stairs, you the first guy to second, and lose the stairs. You can lose the integrity of the stairs, right? I mean, most unfinished bases have like a two by six ladder. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a ladder. It, it is a stairway. There are treads, but there's no risers. They're open stairs. So any heat that's blowing around down there is going to come right through the treads. Some of them are just nailed, three nails on each side. You him, impact one of them things, especially if it's been there for 18 or 23 years, right? So, uh, yeah, unfinished basements have, you know, the stairways is, an, is another whole separate hazard area inside inside the uh, inside of the unfinished basement. Additionally, when you're going down with, with your uh, with your line, first guy, first gal down the stairs, you're going to get a little disoriented, especially if there's no risers, because you're really looking right through the stairs now. You might see fire through the stairway treads, which yeah. is actually in the opposite direction that you're moving. So quite easy to get uh, disoriented in, in, in an unfinished basement. How key is it for someone to not, and I, I've seen this a couple times and it's bothered me, you get an overzealous firefighter in the outside, and there's basement windows in the front or rear, all four sides. You know, they're in the basement. Like you said, it's that dangerous. And they go around and start smashing all the windows out. You know, and, and not knowing where you're at or not knowing to configure. And I'm okay to, to pop in a window or two to give, to give that somewhere to go, especially if I know where the stairs are or whatever. But what are your thoughts on taking or not taking all of the windows to a basement? Well, that, that's as dangerous as you know, indiscriminate venting anywhere else. You get a store fire, you don't just start breaking a plate glass windows. You get a house fire, you don't just start running around a house breaking all the windows. You're gonna affect air movement and, and, the, and the channeling of the gases and if there's a wind possibly there. So, you know, that has to be controlled just like anything else. Any fire on any other level, the, the, the horizontal ventilation, which we'll talk about in a future, future program when we talk about the outside vent guy. Uh, has to be controlled. So somebody venting a basement window or two to detect the basement fire is one thing. Clearing them out all the way around is, is another whole story and, and probably not a good idea until maybe you're into the overhaul stage. Exactly. Good. I'm so glad you said the overhaul stage because I've seen that where somebody, they're all of a sudden, smash, I'm like, what are they doing? Smash, smash, smash. I'm like, stop that. You know, especially if we have a crew downstairs. Like you said, that's no different to run around and doing that when you got people upstairs or whatever. So, okay. Right. So we talked about the importance. We start off saying about the importance of knowing you're still, we, we've always said this. I know you always harp on it. I love that about knowing your still district, knowing your area, knowing the houses and buildings, the commercial buildings, apartment buildings, knowing stuff, know which subdivisions. There are homes all over North America. There, there are slabs and there are crawl spaces that, that I, when I, I lived in the suburbs, I lived in LaGrange. We had a home in LaGrange. It was old home, no basement, had a crawl space. So, we should know that. Engine 2 should know. When you go down Arlington or Argyle or any of those A streets on that neighborhood, all slabs. They're all slabs over there. You know, you should teach the probies that. The engineers know that. The officers know that. And then, you know, you know the newer section, they started building, like you said, they get a little bit of terrain there. They get some hills and stuff they're building on. All the houses got walkout basements. They look just like those other houses on the A streets. But, but the back, it looks like a two-story house and we got a walkout, you know, which we haven't even really addressed yet today. But so knowing what you got, knowing if you, and then you, and then what about in between them crawl spaces? Some places got, I don't know, what do you call it? A half-assed basement. You can't even stand up down there, but there is an area underneath the first floor that you can get into, you know? So you got to know that you got to know you and, and that's, and you learn those when you go out on gas leaks and water leaks and, and reports and fireworks and, and brush fires, you start looking around saying, see these houses here, these houses are all on slabs. And, that, and, that may be the first time a kid's in that neighborhood. And where I grew up, and they were talking an old community, you know, with 100-something-year-old homes back then, there were homes, like our house didn't have a basement. Both, I remember both houses, the McShevicks and the Andersons on each side of us had basements. So, like you said, knowing where they're at, knowing your, your location is country, 
if if you don't have if you probably like you said don't have basements are they now building subdivisions where they'll do those walkouts and stuff so so let's talk real quick before we hang things up tonight and i i started to mention it before and i got a little ahead of ahead of myself with it um you're, you're looking at a building you're doing your size up and i've said this all right you got a guy you got a guy or gal stretching the line they're getting ready to go to the, you know, the front door you're beating feet you get around the back and you have an exposed lower level and you have fire in the lower level and i've said this and this is where eddie enright goes we're talking about this one tragic fire he goes well so rick let me ask you i know you like it i do too i'm in chicago like like going to hit he goes so here's your i'll give you two choices choice a is you know you go through the front door with the smoke and everything else you're trying to find the basement stairs they may not be exactly where you think they are because some of them are in the, off the kitchen some are underneath the stairs going up whatever you're going to find those stairs ascertain if they're you know you're going to figure out can i make the stairs or not is there he too heavy fire we got to back out we don't know whatever and then get myself down the stairs or option b is you get around the back you go oh, rick 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 no bring the line around you have this wide open with a door take a window whatever you don't even have to set foot in there yet to start hitting this fire now it still doesn't negate that we still have to get someone on that that first floor up there we still got to get a line we still got to search but he says why would why would you why would you pay i'm giving you the fire i'm giving you and i've said it before you pull up you have heavy fire in the garage and you've seen it. Well, we have to fight from the unburned to the burn. And they take a line, they drag it, they try to get through this little door. It's right there. We, you, you, you know, knock it, slow it down, whatever, do what you got to do. You know, I'd rather fall into a basement where the fire is either being knocked or is knocked or is, you know, not raging anymore than crawl across the floor and go, well, let's, hey, come on, Rick, let's take. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a, you know, I'm, I hate to be a coward, but because we go in, we talked about that. But when you walk around the back, you see the exposed lower level and you've got fire. Why would you not take? And that's my point is keep that option, because like Eddie said, there's two. Crawl across the floor. Hope you don't fall in it. Get down the stairs. Go get it. Or, oh, come back here. Right here. Take with us. Take this window. Take this door. Or these windows. And let's start hitting it from here. And, and that's all away. valid. And that's all. I mean, it only makes common sense, right? And 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 you already you already addressed the two caveats there, the two things that you want to make sure you do. You want to make sure you get somebody up to that doorway. Doesn't even have to be a line, but you can get a second line up there quick, right? Or you can get a search team in there quick. Just get to the top of the stairs and make sure the dang door is closed. Well, you you, you said start operating a hose line downstairs into the into the fire, knocking it down, and pushing fire and smoke up up the stairway. It, exactly, just like you said, John. First line's in the basement. Second line, you want at the top of the stairs. Same, same. First line is around the back, walkout basement are hitting it, and I, I love that. Second line gets in there, same, same. Just like you said, you know, except instead of going down the interior stairs, the first line, you're hitting it and you're working, you're busting your way in right. for the back. Right. Same, same. And, and again, this doesn't mean, folks, well, now we don't have to go in or we don't have to go surge. It doesn't mean that at all. What we're talking about is quickest avenue safest avenue to a basement fire on an exposed lower level exposed lower level on the backside. so Which all right John. Just back to knowing your lengths and knowing, knowing your your uh, your hose beds knowing how many lengths you have because now going in the front door hitting the stairway and going down now you're gonna have to go all the way to the rear in and now fight your way back you may end up you may end up picking the wrong hose line or the hose bed you want to pick maybe the longer one for the first line now you're going to go in through the rear and then work your way back towards the front. You, you may need another length or two. Uh, so that's another consideration, whether you're going to go first line front door or first line to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the walkout basement in the rear. That's a great point. Great point. Great, great point. So we talked about what we're looking for. We, talk, we started saying this, knowing our still districts, knowing our areas, knowing where the homes are, where our basements are. We just talked residential fires. We didn't get into commercial basements this time because we'll have to cover that another day. All right, and what the and, and the challenges they put post for us, okay? So size up getting in there and then choosing, okay, we're going through the front door, like you said. All right, we're gonna, you know, we, we're gonna make the stairs, we're going now. I, I, I say it all the time if I realize I got a fire in the basement, I need to tell my incident commander, Chief Salka, because he's wants to know, Rick, are you are you going down to get this or are you backing up? How much? And I, I'm the one you said before, I'm the one that knows for the most part, in most cases, how much fire I'm dealing with, and I can tell you. 
it's got the stairs or it doesn't have the stairs. Hey, we're going down. Okay, Rick. Okay, good, man. You keep, you know, and we keep working, you know, however we, we have to do. So we're making a decision going down or not, or getting out and, you know, doing what we got to do, pushing down, like you said, going down on your side. Boom, 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 boom. And I love that. I love how you said that you're, you're going down the basement stairs, almost like you're falling down a controlled fall. Right. That's a better a control fall down. Your side, and, and like I said, making sure you don't lose control of the nozzle and your heel, man, that guy or gal at the top there. I love the, like you said, throwing a loop or two upstairs. So you have hit the ceiling, hit the ceiling, yep. hit the ceiling. And they're pushing that line now. So you get down there quick. You've got control. They didn't push the nozzle out of your hands. You get down there, you're rolling your side. And now if you need more hose, they can push it or you can pull it down for you. They beat the, They do the controlled on their side down the stairs fall. Absolutely. You get there. You, like you said, you may have to hit it. You may have to just give it a shot. Go ahead. In the unfinished basement, you might be able to use the reach of the stream right from the bottom of the stairs. You may be able there to make go. a turn and hit a lot of the fire in an unfinished basement with no with no compartments. Yeah, you may not have to go anywhere. You may have, like we talked about sometimes even at the top of the stairs on the second floor. You lay there, you can hit that bedroom and the door's open. You reach around, you hit this one. Same thing, like you said, you get down there and you've got this wide open space and you're just taking this thing and hitting it. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. So anything else, buddy? Anything else you want to talk about basement well, fires? Well, about or? a million more things, but I think we covered two of the <laughs> two of the major, you know, <laughs> strategies for, for a basement fire. Well, folks, there's a a conversation, if you will, and and you know, it, it's impossible, you know, to take a four hour basement fire class or eight hour and turn it into, you know, have, so we always try to give you those, as John would say, those, those, those gold nuggets, man, the gold nuggets. Um, I think we did a pretty good job walking some folks through on I agree. what you need to consider and what you need to do for basement fire. So, all right, buddy, if they want to get a hold of you, email address. Chief John Salka at gmail.com. And I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. And John and I, uh, again, with, with sons, uh, He's, he's got one of two of his sons that have served in the service. One, uh, Captain James Salka, still in the Marines. And my son did his six years at FMF Corpsman. Uh, we always ask you, always ask you to please keep the men and women in armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. And remember, please remember this, never forgetting means never forgetting. All right. Thank you for, 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 for tuning in with us again. We love you. Be safe and God bless you. Good night.